Welcome to the online session. Uh, my name is Siba, one of your e-tutors. I'm going to present uh, the ISLM model from study unit four. If you have any uh, issues with the, with the presentation, if you don't understand any part of the of the uh, of the presentation, you are welcome to post your concerns on the discussion forum, study unit four, and I will assist you. All right. So uh, I'm going to now start. I'm going to look at the goods market and the IS relation. We want to know what is the impact of, inter of the interest rates on the demand for goods and services and the equilibrium level of income. Uh, this is a very basic information, but it's going to help us to understand the ISLM model just now. So we start with the first important equation. Your demand curve is equal to your autonomous consumption, your autonomous investments plus your government spending. So uh, the impact of uh, how does I affect the above variables? Your, uh, your interest, as interest rate increases, the cost of credit increases, your demand decreases, so your consumption will also decrease. So there's a negative relationship between interest rates and consumption. Investments also, because of the high cost of an increase in, in the interest rates, investments will decrease, hence the negative relation between the two variables. Government spending is is also also has a negative relationship between interest rates and government spending. Okay. Now, the, there are two factors that influence investment investment spending. One is the level of income and output, and the other is the interest rates. Let's look at the first one: the level of income and output. If there's an increase in production, this implies an increase in sales, and the investments will increase. So, therefore, there is a positive relationship between the increase in production, and the level of production, and the level of investments. If your output increases, investments will increase. The level of income and output decreases, your investments will also decrease. So there is a positive relationship between the level of income and output and the, in, and the investments. Then your investments and interest rates. Here we have a negative relationship between interest rates and investments, as we mentioned just now. Investments require funding which is financed. Also remember that interest paid for borrowed funds not only represents the cost of borrowing, but also the opportunity cost of own funds. Okay, so an increase in interest rate will increase the cost of borrowing, and which in, therefore increases your investments, uh, decreases your investment. Sorry, so an increase in interest rates will lead to a higher cost of borrowing, and therefore your investments will decrease. So again, we have a negative relationship between interest, interest rates and investments. A decrease in I will lead to an increase in investments. An increase in, in I will de lead to a, a, a decrease in investments. Okay. Now let's look at the derivation of the IS curve. And before we go into this, remember that the IS curve shows different combinations of interest rates and the levels of income and output where the goods market is in equilibrium. So, so it is, it is it's important to, to know the IS curve represents events that take place in the goods market. And uh, it represents, yeah, activities and events that take place in the goods market. So in deriving the, the, the IS curve, we, we, have, we start with a change in the interest rates. You'll notice in, in, in the, uh, you will notice on the screen there are three diagrams, figure A, figure B, and figure C. And we'll start, when we, when we determine or derive the, what we derive the IS curve, we start with the change in the interest rate. So we assume that your interest rate is I0, and the corresponding level of investment will be I0. But given, given the, uh, the interest rate, I0, the level of investment spending is I0, and the corresponding demand for goods and services, the corresponding demand for goods and services in, in figure B is now ZZ. And the equilibrium point of this demand curve is at point A. And the equilibrium level of income and output is Y. So, so given, given your interest rates I0, your investments is I0, and the demand for goods and services is reflected in figure B as, uh, uh, as the ZZ curve, which cuts, which, which cuts the 45 degree line at point A. Now remember the 45 degree line represents points of equilibrium between Z and Y. So A is on the 45 degree line, so that is your equilibrium point. 
If you drop that line to the Y line, you get the Y, which is your equilibrium level of income and output. Okay, so remember if your interest rate changes, your level of income and output will also change. So if you take this now to the to the IS diagram in figure C, again on the vertical axis you have your interest rates, on the horizontal axis you have the level of income and output Y. Okay, so again we're looking at I0, if you drop the, the Y line to the bottom diagram to figure C and we extend the I0 line where the two lines intersect, is your first point on the IS curve. It's your first point on the IS curve. So where those two lines, where the, 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 the Y line that you drop down to the figure C and the I0 line, the inter zero line where you extend, where those two lines intersect is your first point on the IS curve. So at that point, the goods market is in equilibrium at an interest rate of I0. At that point, the goods market is in equilibrium at an interest rate of y, I0 and an equilibrium level of income and output Y. Now to, to find further points, to, uh, to find another point to enable us to draw the IS curve, we now go back to, to figure A and change the interest rate. So let's assume the interest rate increases now from I0 to I1. So now there's an increase in the interest rate, so we know already that an increase in the interest rates will result in a decrease in investments. Right, because of the high cost of borrowing. So the, the new interest rate now will, the new, to, to, yeah. So in the goods market, the decline in investment spending right, decreases the demand for goods and services. Therefore, the demand for goods and services curve will, will shift. There'll be a parallel downward shift in the ZZ curve to ZZ1. This occurs because of a decrease in the demand for goods. Right? So, so an increase in interest rates from I0 to I1 will result in a decrease in investments. If your investments decrease, there will be a decrease in the demand for, for goods and services, and therefore your, your, your aggregate demand, your ZZ curve, will, 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 there will be a parallel downward shift in the curve. Now, in other words, the position of the curve will change. Now you will realize that the new ZZ curve cuts the 45, the 45 degree line or you can call it the line of equality, at A1. It is a point that is below A, and we find that the level of income, the new level of equilibrium level of income is now Y1, and which is significantly significantly lower than Y. Okay, so, so given the new interest rates of I1, the investments now decreases to, to I1, and this leads to a decrease in the demand for goods and services, Therefore, your, your ZZ curve it, it results in a parallel downward shift in the ZZ curve, and which cuts now the 45 degree line at A1. So remember that at the initial level of equilibrium income, the supply exceeds demand, and therefore there is an adjustment to the lower level of output and income. So at, at A, right? Remember the when there's when your when your investments decrease we will have a, 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 an excess supply uh, where supply will exceed, exceed the demand and therefore we will have to adjust your output from Y to Y1. And when we get to Y1, we will be in equilibrium again. Okay, so, so bear that in mind. So your new equilibrium point is A1 and your equilibrium level of income output is Y1. If we drop that line to the third diagram, Extend your I1 line where those two points intersect is your second point on the IS curve. Right? So, 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 so we have uh, a second point in the IS curve and we can join those two lines which will give us the, the, the IS curve. Now this just one other point that I'd like to mention. If you look at the if you look at figure B. If you look at the change, the, the, the size of the change in ZZ to ZZ1, and the size of the change in the level of income and output from Y to Y1, you'll find that the, 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 the magnitude of the change as a result of a change in, 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 uh, in uh, autonomous spending on the level of income and output is greater. And that occurs because of the multiplier. 
So, so, so the decline in income and output is a multiple of a decrease in investments, spending times the multiplier. So, 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 so the, the change in Y is your multiplier times the change in investment. Therefore, the, the, the magnitude or the size of the change is larger because of the multiplier. Okay, the size of the, the change in the level of income and output is larger than the change in, 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 in uh, investment because of the multiplier. All right. So we've got our two points on the IS curve. Now, we can now repeat the same exercises by, by changing the interest rates to give us more points on the IS curve. So it will give us a series of good market, good goods market equilibrium points that can be plotted in figure C, right, which ultimately gives us a more accurate figure of the IS curve. It's quite simple if you understand this. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to look at a numerical example right, in the derivation of the IS curve. Okay, let's go to the numerical example. Now, <clears throat> We assume that the investment spending is the only component of autonomous spending. There could be others. There could be government spending. There could be consumption spending and export spending and so forth. But we're going to look at investment spending only. Uh, the autonomous spending at an interest rate of 10% is 4,000 rands. 4,000. A decrease in the interest rate from 12 to 10% increases investment spending by 2,000. Now, when we answer this, this this question, guys, the information given is very important. We we'll understand the information provided and use this information to answer the questions that follow. But so, so we require it now to, to give a value to all of those numbers, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, and I. I we need to allocate values to that. So this question deals with the derivation of the IS curve and is based on this, on the information provided. So, so the first thing is to calculate A. Now, the value of A, you all would know, is 4,000 rands, right? Because given in the question, at an interest rate of 10%, your, your autonomous spending is, 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 uh, is 4,000 rands, or 4,000. That is shown in the first figure. At an interest rate of 10, your A is, is 4,000. To calculate B, which is your Z curve in, in, in the second diagram to the right. Now to calculate B now, I think the first thing to do is to calculate the multiplier. Before we, before we do B, let's calculate the multiplier. We know that the formula for the multiplier is 1 over 1 minus C. So, so where's your, where is your, 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 your C? If you look at the, the triangle, Right, 0 0.8 over 1. That tells us that your 0 0.8 is your multi, is your MPC, your your, your MPC. The 0 point tells us for every one one rand earned income earned, 80 cents is spent on consumption goods. So, so your so your MPC tells us what proportion of the income is spent on consumption on consumption goods, and it gives us the slope of the of the of, of the curve. So to calculate the multiplier, it's quite simple. I think you all should know this. It's 1 over 1 minus C, which is 1 over 1 minus 0 0.8, which will give you 1 over 0 0.2, which is 5. So your multiplier is 5. So the, the value of B, okay, at an interest rate of 10%, right? at an interest rate of 10%, autonomous, autonomous spending is 4,000. Right? That is given to us. Uh, so, so therefore, the value of C is 4,000. Now, a decrease in the interest rate from 12 to 10 percent increase investment spending by 2,000. So, so by dropping your interest rates from 12 to 10 percent, your, your, your investments increase by 2,000. Therefore, by working backwards and minus 2,000 from the 4,000, at which A is, you will get the value for B. So B will be 2,000. In other words, 4,000 minus the 2,000 will give us 2,000, and that's the value for B. And we know that C is 4,000, which is 2,000, plus the 2,000. 
the increase in the investment by 2,000 will give you 4,000. So remember, A is given. B, you're going to work backwards uh, to get your a decrease in the state from 12% to 10%, increase investment spending by 2,000. 2, Therefore, by working backwards and minus 2,000 from the 4,000, you will get, you will determine the value for B at, at, at 2,000. And we know that C is. 4,000 now. Now, how do we calculate D? Now, remember, D is your equilibrium level of income and output. To be able to calculate that, you must know what the autonomous spending is and the multiplier. So we know the autonomous spending B is, is 2,000 rands, or 2,000, and your multiplier is 5. So 2,000 times 5 is 10,000 rands. So therefore, D is 10,000. The value of E is the same. Your C is 4,000 times the multiplier, which is 5. So 4,000 times 5 will give you the value of E, which is 20,000. So, so remember, to calculate E, you must multiply the autonomous component, or autonomous spending, by the multiplier to give you 20,000. So to calculate the, uh, the interest rates in the, in the third diagram at the bottom, the IS, IS diagram, the, the interest rates for F and G is 10%, uh, for F it is 10%, and the value of G is 12% that is given in the question. So remember that uh, those values, those interest rates are given already. So F is, is, is 10% and G is 12%. And we must remember, guys, that the, uh, that the IS curve gives us a picture or tells us the records the events that occurs in the in, 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 in the goods market when your interest rate changes, when your interest rate changes. Therefore remember when the derivation we mentioned earlier on, when we derive the IS curve, we must start with the change in the interest rate. We must start with the change in the in the interest rates. Therefore starting the starting point for the, the derivation of the IS curve is the change in the interest rate. Now what is the value for H? The value of H is the same as the equilibrium level of output D, and the value for I is the same as the equilibrium level of output E, which is 20,000. So H is 10,000, I is 20,000. Right? So it, it's going to be exactly the same as the equilibrium level of, of income and output as calculated in the goods market at different interest rates. So, so to plot the first and second points, the third diagram at the bottom to protect to, to, to plot your IS curve, the equilibrium levels of income and output of the goods market will be extended to the bottom diagram, and your interest rates will will be extended to those lines. And you where those two lines intersect, as we had discussed earlier, will represent points. Right? For example, you drop your D line and you extend your F line, you will get you will, your, your G line, you'll get your first point. You drop your, your, your equilibrium output line, and you extend your F line, you get the second point. So you join those two points and you'll get your IS curve. That is how you derive your IS curve. If there are any difficulties, uh, please uh, record them in the, uh, the discussion forum and I will assist you. Here's your solution here. You can have a look at this at your, at your leisure. And uh, if you still have issues, you can record them in the discussion forum. This, 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 actually, this activity is tutor activity 12. Right? Tutor activity 12 in your study guide. So there's a detailed explanation or detailed solution of of this of this activity. Okay, let's go on. Let's look at now shifts and movements along the IS curve. Shifts and movements along the IS curve. Um, a shift in the IS curve is caused by a change in any of the autonomous factors that changes the demand for goods and services and the equilibrium level of income and output and the equilibrium level of income and output. So a shift in the IS curve could could occur as a result of 
changes in autonomous factors. Uh, it could be as a result of an increase in government spending or an increase in investment, consumption spending or exports. So remember, if there's an increase in any of the autonomous factors, there will be a rightward shift in the IS curve. If there is a decrease in any of the autonomous in any of the autonomous components, there will be a leftward shift in the in the IS curve. A movement along the IS curve is caused by a change in the interest rates. So remember, in the first case, a shift results in a change in the position of the IS curve, either to the right or to the left. A movement along the IS curve is caused by a change in interest rates. And so the curve remains intact. All that happens is, is a movement along the curve. If there's an increase in the interest rates, there'll be an upward movement along the IS curve. A decrease in its interest rates will cause a downward movement along the IS curve. Right, comparing points from the IS curve, a movement from, from point you on the vertical axis, you've got your interest rates. On the horizontal axis, you've got your level of income and output, and your point of origin is zero. Right, you've got your I1 and I2 on the vertical axis, Y1 and Y2 on the horizontal axis. At point A, right, your interest rate is I1, your level of income and output is Y1. A decrease in, in interest rates from I1 to I2 will cause an increase because of the lower cost of borrowing, the demand for goods and services increase, your <coughs> consumption increases, the level of income, income and output, the equilibrium level of income and output will also increase. And in this case, it will increase from Y1 to Y2. So therefore, you'll find that there is a downward movement along the IS curve from A to B. If there were an increase in the interest rates, for example, from I2 to I1, that will result in a decrease in uh, investments, a decrease in the demand for goods and services, and consumptions will decrease in the level of income and output will, will move from Y2 to Y1. And when that happens, you'll find that there will be an upward movement, upward movement along the IS curve from B to A. I've, I've explained the shift in the uh, in the IS curve. For example, if there's an increase in government spending, at each interest rate I, the demand for goods and for goods and the equilibrium level of output and income increases, and the I curve shifts to the right. So one example of an autonomous component is G. If there's an increase in government spending at interest rate I, right, there will be a, a shift in the IS curve from IS1 to IS2, and you'll find that the level of income and output increases from Y1 to Y2. And there's your chain of events. Increase in government spending leads to an increase in the demand for goods and your output equilibrium level of income and output increases as well. There's a shift in the IS curve. Now let's look at the derivation of the LM curve now. The approach that we use is, is where the, 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 the central bank directly targets the interest rates. So, so remember that the LM curve now represents events that take place in the financial markets, right, when the level of income and output changes. So, so, so your IS curve represent, represented, uh, gave us a picture of events that, takes, that took place in the, in the goods market. Here we have the LM curve now uh, represents activities or events that take place in the financial market when the level of income and output changes. For example, if your level of income increases, the demand for money will increase, which will lead to an increase in the interest rate. Right? And to ensure that the money demand, the equilibrium between the goods market and your financial market, to ensure that the money demand remains equal right, to the given independent money supply. So interest rates will increase right, because of the increase in demand for money and the and therefore, to ensure that the money demand remains equal to the given independent money supply. In other words, equilibrium in both the, in both the markets. So remember, the, the, the LM curve is, is not influenced by the level of in, income and output. It is determined by the central bank. And therefore, you'll find just now that the LM curve is, LM curve is a perfectly horizontal line. 
at interest rate R, your LM curve is perfectly horizontal. That clearly indicates that it is not influenced by the level of income and output Y. It is the central bank that determines the interest rates, which affects the cost of credit and loans, and also affects the demand for money and the quantity of money. Therefore, the LM curve is illustrated by a horizontal line. Shifts in the LM curve. Um, if we look at the top diagram, there's a shift in the LM curve from LM to LM1. In other words, your, your, as, your, as your interest rate increases, your LM curve shifts from LM. There's a parallel upward shift. So, so a shift in the LM curve occurs when the central bank decides to change the interest rate. An increase in the interest rate will cause a parallel upward shift in the LM curve. So an increase in the interest rate from I0 to I1 will cause a parallel upward shift in the LM curve from LM to LM1. And conversely, if there's a decrease in the interest rate from I0 to I1, there will, there will be a parallel downward shift in the LM curve from LM to LM1. We bring these two markets together, your IS and LM, your two curves together, your IS and LM curve. Remember the IS curve represents activities in the goods market. The LM curve represents events on the, in the financial markets. Where these two curves intersect, at point A, we have equilibrium. At point A indicates that the financial market and the goods market are in equilibrium, right, at point A. Also remember that, you know, the economy can be in equilibrium and still be below full, full employment, full, uh, still, below, still be below the level of full employment, okay? So the, uh, an economy can be in equilibrium and still be below the level of full employment. So we have certain exogenous and endogenous variables in the ISLM model. Right? So, so remember your, your exogenous variables are not influenced by Y, right? they are influenced by factors outside of Y, right? outside of the market, like, like business confidence and, and legislation and so forth. The endogenous variables are influenced by the level of income and output. Now remember this, although, although your exogenous variables are not influenced by Y, your exogenous variables like government spending or, or consum autonomous consumption spending or con autonomous investments, they, will, they, they can influence the level of income and output Y. Right? So remember that although your exogenous variables are not influenced by Y, the level of income and output Y, they will, they can influence Y. Now you'll find all the endogenous and exogenous variables in the ISLM model on page 136 of your study guide. I'll just give you one, one example. You know consumption, there are two parts to consumption. One is your autonomous consumption and your induced consumption. Your autonomous consumption is, is, is not dependent on, on the level of income and output Y, therefore it is an exogenous variable. Your induced part of your consumption function YD is your endogenous part of your consumption function, right? It's induced and therefore it is dependent on the level of income and output Y. We know that government spending is wholly exogenous. Uh, there's, no part of, there's no part of government spending that is influenced by, by, by the level of income and output. So too with exports. Exports also is wholly exogenous and not influenced by the level of income and output. Your investments, there are two parts to investments and there are two parts to your consumption. And there are two parts to your, your, your imports as well. Okay, so you have your, 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 your exogenous and endogenous variables. Please look at the table on page 136 of your study guide and it will give you uh, a greater give you give you the information in greater detail and i think it's very important that you go through this again if you have any issues with this post your concerns in the discussion forum and i will assist you okay so let's move on now using the ISLM model to illustrate how fiscal policy can be used to reach full employment we all know that fiscal policy is government policy and fiscal policy is generally lodged with the National Treasury. 
right? And the policy instrument for fiscal policy is the budget. And the and the uh, variables, policy variables that are used to implement the budget is government spending and or taxes. So, so the question is, how do we use how do we use government spending? How do we use government spending to move the economy towards full employment? Right? So it's got to be an expansionary fiscal policy, right? An expansionary fiscal policy will suggest an increase in government spending and or a decrease in taxes. So let's look at now firstly an increase in government spending. An increase in government spending will result in an in the right which shift in the IS curve. Your original IS, IS curve is IS at interest rate high and your your equilibrium level of income and output is, is A, where your goods market and your, and your financial market is in equilibrium at, at your, in, your, your equilibrium level of income and output Y, zero. Now, if there's an increase in government spending, this will result in a rightward shift in the IS curve to IS1. And this curve now cuts the, cuts the LM curve at point B. So therefore, your new equilibrium point now given interest rate I is point B. And your new equilibrium level of income and output is YF. So therefore, your, 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 your goods market and financial market is in equilibrium at point B. So you'll note that now the, the economy has moved right, from Y0 to YF. The so YF will suggest full employment. And what does this mean? At all your resources are fully employed, right? Your natural resources, your capital, your entrepreneurship, and your labor is fully employed, and we have full employment. Yes, so government spending, increasing government spending is one way to move the economy towards full employment. Then we have a decrease in the interest rates now. We're looking at, at, at monetary policy now. A decrease in interest rate is an expansionary monetary policy. It's, it's expansionary because a decrease in the states will decrease, will reduce the cost of borrowing. And it will induce investors to go and borrow money because of the low cost of borrowing. And uh, the economy will, well, the investments will increase, the demand for goods and services will increase. Uh, well, firstly, your, your disposable income will increase, your Increase in the demand for goods and services, consumption increases, and the level of income and output will also increase. Okay, so a decrease in interest rate is an expansionary monetary policy. So if you look at the diagram, interest rates on the vertical axis, uh, levels of income and output on the horizontal axis, your point of origin is zero. Right, your 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 at, at interest rate I zero, your LM curve is LM, your IS curve is downward sloping. Right? It cuts the LM curve at point A. At point A, your equilibrium level of output is Y0, and point A represents equilibrium between the LM curve, between goods market and the financial markets. Okay? But if there's a decrease in the interest rate now from, from uh, I0 to I1, this will result in a downward shift, a parallel downward shift in the LM curve. Right, this is a this is a monetary action uh, policy action. So therefore, your LM curve is 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 effect, affected. Okay. So there's a because of a decrease in interest rates and the interest rates will affect the LM curve. So there's a downward a parallel downward shift from I0 to I1, and the new LM curve is LM1 and cuts the the IS curve at point B. So at point B, you we will know we will note that your goods market and financial markets are in equilibrium. And your equilibrium level of income and output is YF. So therefore, by decreasing the interest rates, we can now move the economy from Y0 to YF. In other words, moving the economy to full employment. So we looked at how fiscal policy can be used to move the economy to full employment, and now how monetary policy can be used to move the economy to full employment. Uh, let's look at now the impact of fiscal contraction as far as taxes are concerned now. So, so, so uh, the impact of a fiscal contraction increases, uh, will result in an increase in taxes. Will result in an increase in taxes. 
so, so remember, uh, an increase in taxes will impact, will have an impact on the IS curve. Right? So let's look at the original diagram. You measure I, uh, interest in the vertical axis, while on the horizontal axis, your point of origin is zero. Your IS curve is IS, your LM curve is LM, and your A curve, and your both curves cut at point A. Intersect at point A. So at point A, your you have equilibrium in the goods and financial market, and your level of income and output is Y. The equilibrium level of income and output is Y. So an increase in taxation will shift the IS curve from IS to IS1 at each and every interest rate. And the demand for goods and, uh, goods and the equilibrium level of income and output is lower, and therefore we have a leftward shift in the IS curve from IS1, IS to IS1. Okay, so so the government now has decided to keep government spending intact, right? and decided to increase taxes. So we know that increase of taxes is a contractionary fiscal policy, a contractionary fiscal policy, and uh, this will result in a a, a leftward shift in the IS curve from IS to IS one, and you'll find now that your there will be a movement along the LM curve from A to A1. A movement along the LM curve from A to A1. And your new equilibrium level of income output is Y1. So at A1, your goods market is equal is equal is in equilibrium with the financial market, and your new equilibrium level of income and output is Y1. There's your, your chain of events at the bottom. Increase in taxes will decrease your disposable income. Consumption will decrease, your demand for goods and services will decrease, and the level of income and output will, will, will decrease. Now, now uh, let me give you some good advice, guys. These chain events are extremely important. Right? If you go through past exam papers, I know you, you know you, I know you got a multiple choice question, but if you go through past exam papers, every exam paper will have a question on 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 on, on chain of events. Right? And they make very good question for multiple choice uh, type of questions. So uh, the, 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 these chain of events are extremely important. And you need to get those chain of events correct. You know the correct chain of events. And then uh, I think they're very important and you should pay particular attention to these chain of events. So we, so we can see what happens when there's a fiscal contraction using taxes. There's your explanation, which you can read at your leisure. And if you still have a problem, record it in the discussion forum. Right, let me move on. Uh, an increase in government spending is an example of an expansionary fiscal policy. I've just done the, uh, the chain of events here to illustrate the importance of chain of events. An increase in government spending is an expansionary fiscal policy. right? What is the impact on the goods market? Increase in G will lead, autonomous government spending will lead to an increase in demand for goods and services. Then your level of output will increase. Why increases your, 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 your demand increases and your consumption increases? Why increases your investments also increase? And remember that the multiplier is in operation. That the multiplier process is in operation. It's a wise thing to, to include that in your answer to explain the, the multiplier process. Okay. Now, what is the impact of this now on the financial market? What is the impact of an increase in government spending? Huh? In other words, what is the impact of an expansion of fiscal policy on the financial markets? Remember, both these markets do not markets do not work in isolation. Right? It's impossible for these markets to work in isolation. So they are interrelated. Let's see the relationship now. The impact on the financial market. If there's an increase in the level of income, income and output, there's going to be an increase in the demand for money. Now we're using a uh, look at abundantly expansion using interest rates. How do we expand the economy using interest rates? Firstly, now when you when uh, a good clue in answering these questions is if we look if you look at the previous previous slide. We look at the increase in government spending. When we look at fiscal policy, we start with the goods market. Right? 
we start our explanation with a good market. Here, we're looking at monetary policy, and we, then we start with the, we start our discussion with, with the financial markets. And that's a, a good clue so that you don't get confused in your explanation. Right? So the initial impact is on the financial markets. And so a monetary expansion we know is a decrease in the interest rates. And a decrease in interest rates will obviously result in a decrease in the cost of borrowing. So this will shift the LM curve downwards from LM to LM to LM1. It's in the diagram here, yeah? show it to you just now. And a new equilibrium is reached at, at point A1. And this is referred to as a monetary expansion, which occurs as a result of a decrease in your interest rates. Right? There's your, L, your LM and IS curve at point A, they intersect each other at point A. Interest rates in the vertical axis, Y on the horizontal axis, the point of origin is zero. At point A, the goods market and the financial market is in equilibrium, and the equilibrium level of income and output is Y. With the impact of an expansionary monetary policy, there's a decrease in interest rates from I to I1, and this results in a parallel downward shift in the LM curve. So the new LM curve now cuts the, the IS curve at A1, at interest rate I1. This now gives us uh, a new equilibrium level, Y1, which is higher than, than Y. So, so clearly a, an expansionary monetary policy has resulted in an increase in the level of income and output. Okay. Again, please remember that the multiplier process is in operation and uh, important that you mention that in your answer. Then I'm going to start now. Before I start with the revision questions, I want to alert you with with the uh, with some important issues regarding this, this particular model module. Now, now you can be you you must be able to understand the impact of 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 of, of both expansionary and monetary policy, right? Given given certain situations in the economy, for example, if there is if there is high levels of unemployment in the economy. And government wants to use both uh, wants, wants to use both monetary policy and fiscal policy. So we have a policy mix to address this issue. Right? So, so you must be prepared for questions like that. And you'll find a discussion on this on page 148, 147, 148, 149, and 150 of your study guide. Right? We refer to this your policy mix. If, if government wants, for example, to address the issue of unemployment, high levels of unemployment in the economy, I think may decide to use both fiscal policy and monetary policy, right? Use an expansionary fiscal policy and an expansionary monetary policy. So you must know the impact of that on, 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 on the diagram and the explanation that will, that will follow thereafter. And, and you'll get the answers to that on, on, on study guide on, 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 on page. 147, 148, 149, and 150 of your study guide. Uh, that is pretty important, guys. So uh, I, I would suggest that you go through those through those uh, pages. Also, you got two activity 14 and 15. Right? Yeah, my advice, I suggest that you do those two activities, 14 and 15, and put them onto the uh, post them onto the uh, discussion forum, and we will check to see whether your answers are correct. Right. Remember, your tutorial activities are important. OK, so you, you are, I would advise you to go through every single tutorial activity. Right, so let's go to some of the revision questions. You know that you have revision questions for each of your study units. And they're all multiple choice questions, which are similar to your examination type questions, because they're also multiple choice questions. And, and remember, your, your 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 reaction time in the examination is, is, is you have just about uh, under two minutes for each question. Right? So you got to you got to know the theory behind these multiple choice questions, and you got to know the theory behind these multiple choice. You may be able to analyze these questions, know your equations, know your 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 diagrams and and, and so forth to be able to be able to answer these multiple. Choice. They're not easy, right? So don't don't be under the misconception that these multiple choice questions are easy. They're not. <coughs> so my advice to you is to go through 
those division exercises from study unit one to study unit nine. Go through it slowly and thoroughly so that you have a good understanding of why certain options are incorrect and why certain options are correct. Okay, so I'm just going to go through a few, a few uh, multiple choice questions in, uh, in study unit four. Um, just to help you along. The first one, which one, which one is not, which one of the following is not an exogenous variable in the ISLM model? And the first one, the part of investment that is influenced by expectations, business confidence, and political and social factors. Right? Is that, the question says, which one of the following is not an exogenous variable? Clearly, number one, option one is exogenous. And that is a, a perfect definition of what an exogenous variable is. Right? Or what is it influenced by, sorry. So your, your, your exogenous variable is that part of investment that is influenced by factors outside the market, like your expectations, business confidence, political and social factors. And so that can't be the correct answer. Right? Taxation. Taxation is not influenced by level of income and output, so it's exogenous. Right? We assume that in this module, we assume that taxation is exogenous. The third one is the level of income and output. Well, that is, that's the correct answer, okay? And the fourth one is part of demand for money that is influenced by business confidence and expectations is exogenous. Next, next question, which of the following statements are correct? According to the ISLM model, investment spending will increase if there is a decrease in the interest rate and or an increase in the level of income and output. Investment increases if there is a decrease in the interest rates and there will be an increase in the level of income and output. That is an expansionary fiscal policy. I beg your pardon. That's an expansionary monetary policy. That a, a decrease in interest rates will increase your investments and your level of income and output will increase. So that statement is correct. B, a higher, the higher the interest rate, the higher the cost of borrowing. That makes sense. And the, the, the higher, the, the, because of the higher cost of borrowing, there will be a, the higher the opportunity cost of, of owning funds. The higher the interest rate, the higher the cost of borrowing will be, and the higher the opportunity cost of owning funds. So if, if you hold hold funds, the, the opportunity cost of, of, of owning of holding funds is the loss of interest rate, of the high interest rate. So that's the opportunity cost. So B is correct. C, there is a positive relationship between the level of output and income and the level of investment spending and a negative relationship between interest rates and the level of investment spending. That is correct. We discussed this early on in the presentation. D, investment spending takes place when firms increase their spending on capital goods. Right? So that is also true. So, you know, we need to differentiate between investment in, 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 in the financial market, for example, in bonds, and right? that is uh, financial investments, and which falls under the ambit of your accountant, uh, your, your accountant, uh, right? But for, for us as economists, that right, investment that takes place in the real market, right? The spending of 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 of, of, of uh, on, 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 on capital goods is your uh, is correct. So in this particular example, all four options are correct. The correct option is number one. Third one, which of the following statements is correct regarding the derivation of the IS curve? To derive the IS curve, we change the interest rates. We change the interest rates to determine the effect of the level of output and income. That's correct. Remember, we said the starting point, in the derivation of the IS curve is the change in the interest rate. So that A is correct. B, to derive the IS curve, we change the level of income and output to determine the effect on the interest rate. That's not, that's not true. That's incorrect. 
because we start not with the level of output, we start with the interest rates. C, the IS curve represents combinations of levels of output and income and interest rates where the financial market is in equilibrium, given that all autonomous variables are unchanged. That's also incorrect. We're looking at the derivation of the IS curve, guys, right? And that this does not tell us right, that uh, anything about the derivation of the IS curve. Yes, it tells us what the IS curve represents, but we need to know how it is derived so that C is incorrect. D. The IS curve represents combinations of the level of income and output and interest rate where the goods market and financial markets are in equilibrium, given that all the autonomous variables are unchanged. That's also incorrect. So therefore, your correct answer is only A. The following, following statements is are correct. An increase in investor, in investor's confidence, increases your autonomous investment. And therefore, a downward movement, and therefore a downward movement along the IS curve. That statement is incorrect because the movement along the along the IS curve occurs as a result of a change in interest rates. Okay, so that's incorrect. An increase in investor confidence increases autonomous spending, and the IS curve shifts to the right. That is correct. An increase in investor confidence will impact autonomous spending and therefore a downward moving movement along the IS curve. It will not impact autonomous spending and therefore a downward is not correct. Right? D, an increase in investor confidence increases the level of income and output and the IS curve shifts to the right. That is true. The correct option is B and D. So remember, C is incorrect because your investor confidence will impact on your autonomous spending. Okay. Okay, so I've chosen four questions from your revision exercises. There are more questions there. Please attempt those questions. And if you don't understand any one of those questions, all right, post your answers on the uh, discussion forum and we will, uh, we will help you with that. Okay. Do you have do you have any questions that you like to to, to, to pose? Uh, you you will have to uh, place them or post them onto the the the, uh, the discussion forum. So thank you guys for for listening to this presentation. I, I hope it's going to be of value to you. And your ISLM model is an important uh, unit in your syllabus. So pay particular attention to this module. And uh, if you have any issues, please con contact me via the uh, discussion forum and I will help. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Bye.